All right, so we're going to do 12 one. It's an introduction to matrices. Um, matrices are used to organize a bunch of linear systems, a bunch of linear equations. Okay, so when we solve systems of equations back in August, we use matrices on the calculator. Do you guys remember doing that? We entered in all the elements into a matrix and then we would use the reduced row echelon form on the calculator and it would give us an answer. Um, you would see a matrix that looked like this and then you would have your solution to the system on this side, right? We use matrices to solve the system of equations without even knowing what a matrix was. Um, most applicable to your lives that I found of where matrices are used on your Instagram and Snapchat filters. The, not the ones that change your face to looking like a monkey, okay, but the ones that like lighten everything up or um, when they fade the background or all those things, they use matrices to do it. Okay, basically they take your picture and they break it into a grid and they assign each part of the grid a number based upon the color and then they adjust it from there. Okay, so if you were ever wanting to work for Instagram and those filters that they allow you to put on there, you would need to know how to do matrices. Okay, so that's where matrices are seen at around us. Um, we're going to talk about all the vocabulary of the matrix today. So when we're going through the chapter, um, you know what we call things. So the first, the number of elements. Elements is what they call the entries of the matrix. So real simple, right? There's six elements in this matrix. Who wants to know how many there are? There's six of them. There's six of them on number two. If you can count, you can identify how many elements there are. This one has three. This one has three. It's really hard. Try not to stress out. That one has four and this one has two elements. Okay, that's it. Real easy. How many entries there are? Each one of these counts as an element. Um, when they do the dimensions of a matrix, it's always rows by columns. Rows by columns. You think of a column, you think of a post going up and down on a house. Well, I don't know if you do, but I do. Okay, columns go up and down. Rows go sideways. So rows are this way, columns are this way. So when you go to count them, when we say rows, it, this one has three rows. It has three rows by two columns. So this one, when you say what's the matrix, you would say this is a three by two matrix. It's got three rows, rows go sideways, columns go up and down. So three rows, there's three rows and two columns. Okay, this one, what is it? Two by three. Yep, it has two rows and three columns, so it's a two by three matrix. Aubrey, what's number nine? One by one. One by It has one row, but it has. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Look at my arrows. It actually is a one row by three columns. It doesn't really look like it's a column, so it wouldn't be supporting much if we think of like on a house. But this is a one by three because it has three things if you were to go up and down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so if you see that again, like on number 12, what's number 12? You can't see it. Oh no. Can we con somebody? One by two. Does it look like a two by two to you? You do need better glasses. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. All right, I won't pick on you anymore then. We'll pick on Braley. Braley, it's number 11. Number 11? Yeah. Number 10. Oh, Number 11? So, um, that's two 
Two by two. Two by two. I'm tricking everybody. That one is a two by two. I saw a number 12. <laughs> I forgot that you were seeing double or something. Make it a two no, I'm, right. no <laughs> I'm sorry. Skipping around is not helping. Marcus, what's number 10? It's a three by one. Right, we got three rows and then one column. Now, I will say that's probably one of the most commonly made mistakes that I see is people just getting the rows and the columns to around. All right, we have different kinds of matrices. And these are really hard too, guys. I'm telling you, matrices are gonna stress you guys out. This is a row matrix. It just has a row, um, one row, then it's a row matrix. It could be a one by 500 would be a row matrix. Okay, and what do you think it's called then if it goes straight up and down? That is a column matrix. Wow, Kyle could write the math book. Okay, so we got a row matrix and a column matrix. Um, what genius thing do you think they called it if it's a two by two or three by three or four by four? Or so on. Did you guys come up with it? What would you call that? Well, that one's two by two. This one's three by three. What if it was a four by four or five by five or 25 by 25? No, you wouldn't call it a square. I would call it a square. It is a square matrix. Square matrix has the same number of rows and columns. So if it tells you the rows and the columns are equal, it's gonna make a square matrix. Okay, a row of one, that is the identity matrix. The identity matrix. Diagonal row of ones. And if it's all zeros, then it is a zero matrix. Is we feeling all right so far? Let's continue. You're going to get questions. You're going to do a quizzes to practice this stuff on. And you're going to get questions where I ask you for elements, um, ask you what element, like this one, is in row two, column three. So you go to the second row and to the third column, and you see what is in that position. Right, so the answer in this one would just be negative 18 is in the second row in the third column. Another way that they might write it is like this, where it says A12. That's just saying the first row and the second column. So be familiar with that notation. Okay. The first one is gonna be the row, the second one's the column. So in this one, row one, column two, what's there? Kyle, you haven't answered me yet. Nine. Nine. Yep. Okay, but the notation of it's new to us. We haven't seen anything written like this. A three, two, that's the third row, second column. You just find where they meet at, no big deal. All right, um, if the matrices are equal, then that means each element that's at the same place as the other matrix is the same. So for instance, on number 15, it says to solve for X and Y. This is in the first row, second column. It's gonna be equal to the first row, second column of the other matrix. So when you set these up to solve it, 3x plus 1 is going to equal 16, and 2y minus 1 is going to equal negative 5. All right, because that 2y minus 1 is in the same place as that negative 5. So then we just have two two-step equations to solve. So get those solved real quick. We'd subtract 1, that'd give me 3x equals 15. Then I divide by three, so X is five. The other one, we'd add one over, that'd give me two Y equals negative four. Divide by two, Y would equal negative two. So we have X is five and Y is negative two.
Okay, number 16. Similar idea. Oh, do I need to go back? I'm sorry. I think I'm a little quick. I'll put that back up there. Let me finish. If you've already feel good and confident about number 16, I'll go over it and you can check in a second, but you can start getting your computer turned on because your assignment for today is a quizzes. So you can get on there and start working on it. Okay, this one, um, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but pick one, x plus three, set it equal to nine, or you could do the x plus one equal to seven. You'll get the same answer either way you go. Subtract three over, we get x equals six. And then the y's, we'd have y minus one equals two y plus five, and we can solve that equation. No big deal, just don't empty a side out. So let's say I add the one over, that give me y equals two y plus six, subtract the two y, so I get negative one y equals six and then divide by negative one. So if you already worked ahead on number 16, you end up getting that x is six and y is negative six. Okay, so just practicing, being able to identify all those things, being able to apply the elements, um, a nice Monday lesson introduction to matrices before we start doing operations with them. Uh, matrices are handy because they allow us to organize a bunch of numbers and a set of data and then be able to manipulate them however we want. So at the end of the chapter that we're doing, our shortened version of matrices, uh, we'll be doing application problems real life situation problems uh, to organize data. So that's where we're heading with this.